All right. So array addition. Um, okay, so this is the subset sum problem. Um, I'm going to see if I can get any more people in because a lot of people have questions about this one. Um, so will you pull up the subset sum problem on Wikipedia? Is that large enough? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll give it a second, see if people click the link. Um, but uh, okay, so the subset sum problem uh, says it's really a problem. And uh, for example, given the set, all these numbers, um, can some subset of the greater set add up to zero? Uh, and for the values they provided, the answer is yes. Um, but uh, so this one, um, brute forcing this is typically not a good solution uh, because of the runtime of it and the complexity. Uh, substituting everything out, it, it just it balloons extremely quickly. Uh, but knowing that Coderbyte doesn't provide any large arrays, uh, we're going to go ahead and do a brute force solution that involves recursion. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's go back and start programming. Okay. Do you remember how? Yep. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so this particular problem, we're going to take an array of numbers, uh, that's passed in an array and return true if any, any combination of the numbers in the array can be added up to equal the largest number in the array. Otherwise we return false. Um, so in this example up here, it would return true because all the numbers add up to 23, which is the largest element in the array. Um, and we're going to do, we're going to solve this in a recursive fashion here. Um, so we need to check our base cases. That's very important that you do this early on in recursion because otherwise this will uh, execute indefinitely and your computer will run out of memory. Well, I think, uh, I think we're going to need another, uh, another function to actually perform the recursion in um, because first we're going to need to get the largest element of the array out. That's, yeah, that's true. Um, now we could do it. We could do it in there, because um, you could just do array, comma largest. You could change the method signature, uh, because in JavaScript, um, if you if you pass in extra arguments to to uh, a method um, or a function, it uh, it just doesn't even bother with them. Uh, oh, this could contain negative numbers. Uh, should we use number negative infinity? Well, no. There... Because largest number is going, we're going to determine the largest number right after this, right? So. All right, but if we encountered a negative one, like in this example, that's not larger than zero. Right. But. So what I would do is write an if. So if largest number, then perform some kind of calculation, right, to get your largest number, 
otherwise go on and move on. Um, which is why I also kind of like doing this in two functions um, because you're, you're separating concerns at that point. Okay. Uh, get rid of all this. Right, and now you, since we're going to do it in another function, we can just leave the original signature the same. We can get rid of that largest number and this, and we can just det we can calculate a largest number and then call a recursive function down below. Okay. Our largest number. Uh, uh, I wouldn't do zero. I mean, you can. You can or do actually, it. Would yeah. You reduce, though? Well, I wouldn't reduce it um, because. So. Is that going to modify the original array? Uh, you know, I'm 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 not sure if it will. Uh, let's take a look at the MDN. But personally, what I would do is I would sort it and then pop the last element off because that way I'm not I I'm modifying my array anyway, which I need to do. Um, cause I need to pull that last, or I need to pull the largest element out and, um, and then I'm, I, so sorting it is a, is just a byproduct. It, they could come in in any order to the recursive function. It won't matter, but we, we do need to remove that last element. So, uh, yeah. And then our recursive function here. All right. Okay. Um I believe uh Weren't we popping numbers off each time uh, and stopping the recursion when the length hit zero? Yeah. That seems like a logical way to do it. Right. And just in case people are wondering, um, so you go ahead and write out the, uh, the base case. Um, <clears throat> so what he's doing right now is he's defining the base case. It, whenever you do a recursive function, you want to really define when should this recursive function stop like I, I don't want it to run anymore um, so that's what he's doing with array dot length equals zero and the array dot length equals zero um, you may wonder why it's like that uh, it's because we're gonna pull elements out of the array um, and we're actually gonna subtract those elements from largest number <clears throat> some people are thrown off because it says well they have to add up to it well Okay, if you start with zero and you add, say, nine and one, you're going to equal ten. If you start at ten and you subtract nine and one, you're going to equal zero. So if you're checking for zero or you're checking for some sum of numbers, uh, if they add up to your target number, uh, it's essentially it's the inverse of each other. Um, and by subtracting each element off of largest number, you save yourself uh, having to store an additional data structure. Yep. Actually, um, I'm going to do that up here. Largest number. Uh, no, 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 no. Um, okay, so <clears throat> what I would do here, right, is we, we know, we know how we want it to end, right? So we can just return our case, right? So now let, we're going to, we're going to define our base case all the way. And the base case, or the the base case is array.length equals zero, and then 
we're just going to return this largest number equals triple equals zero um, so this is a gonna evaluate to a boolean true or false all right so that's it now we need to perform the actual meat and potatoes of the recursive function um, so the first thing we do is we'd say ver uh, let's say we'll call it possible all right equals uh, array and we'll just call it the first element in the array right <coughs> um, and then array equals array dot slice one and what that does is it slices the array starting at the at index one to the end um, so remember arrays start from zero so if we did slice zero it would give us the whole array slice one gives us everything but everything in the zero index and then down here is where we would call um, our recursive we would call our own function So in the return here, right, we need to, on one side, test our value. So, and then on the other side, look and see what would happen if we don't, and you use really long names for everything. So on this side, we are subtracting the element from largest number. On this side, we are not subtracting the element from largest number. So each time this function goes through, and you know what, can I just, uh, I'm going to rename some stuff real quick. Because really what this is is the target, right? So. Mm -hmm. And can yeah. There we go. Okay. So uh target. Okay. That's a little better. So um all right, so the way this is gonna work. Um, and let's go ahead and conceptualize what would happen if we passed in the array one, two, three, and let's say five. All right. Or, and five is our largest. <coughs> so the first time this comes in, the array has elements one, two, and three, and large, or, and target is now five. So array.length is not equal to zero so it doesn't bother with this it goes down into the else all right very possible is array zero which is one and then we call array dot slice one so that removes one from the array permanently all right so we're left with two and three on this left side we are calling our own function recursively all right with an array the and the array contains two and three and target minus possible is 5 minus 1 so this is going to equal 4 when it calls it so it's 2 and 3 and 4 on this side it's going to spawn a whole new execution chain and it's going to <coughs> compare or it's going to pass the array 2 and 3 and target but target isn't being modified at all so the value is still 5 all right and it's going to keep doing this every time it comes through so 1 becomes 2, those 2 become 4, those 4 become 16, so on and so forth. It, it, it or 8, yeah, it, uh, it doubles every time. It, it gets pretty ridiculous, which is why a brute force solution isn't a very good idea. Um, but because the, like anything over 15 elements will actually crash your browser, I'm pretty sure. Um, but let's go ahead and test and see if it works. Okay. 
So you could actually run that to get a false value. So all of the test cases passed. Right. <clears throat> um, so let me make sure. Does anyone have any questions? The best part about that is they're going to hear me ask that like 10 seconds after I've typed it. And 15 second rule says nobody has any questions on recursion, so let's go. Submit code and move on. Um, I'm going to go get something to drink real quick uh, if you want to start uh, hammering away at the next